We are with, here we are with Bud Frederick, Pierce Frederick, and H. Reed Myers, two of them very distinguished gentlemen. One, because he's, um, well, we'll say he's distinguished because he's the ne nephew, <laughs> excuse me, of Marietta Johnson. And the other, Reed Myers, is my brother-in-law. That's what makes him distinguished. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Reed has to be one of the first snowbirds to come and live permanently in Fairhope, and Bud has been here forever and ever. And Bud, let's start with you. You want to tell us when you were born here, or, or if you don't want to tell your age, yeah, approximate age. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't come up against anybody who didn't want to tell us their age, so uh, I'll put you on the spot. I'm a son of Paul A. Frederick and Esther Pierce Frederick, and my mother, Esther, is the niece of Marietta Johnson, and they came here in about 1920, I believe, and uh, let's see, my brother and I were both born in the little house next to the old Christian church over on Church Street, mm -hmm. between the, what used to be the Fairhope High School and the Christian church. Is that house still now there? It's the element, no, it's just a kindergarten, I believe it is. Okay. Yeah, it's there. Okay. And, uh, Do you remember Marietta Johnson? I think y'all called her oh, Aunt yes. Betty. Mm -hmm. And right. what do you remember about her? Oh, so many things. Well, tell us some of them. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of person was she? Well, every time, every summer, she would either go to um, Europe or some place like, uh, oh, what's the name of the place in Connecticut? Grant, Grant. Guy. Nope, can't see that. <laughs> to give lectures, and then we would move from wherever house we were in, we'd move over to the school home, mm -hmm. which is there now here, and uh, stay in the school home during the summertime. So I can remember most of the things around that time. And when she'd come back, she would always bring us some something that she had gotten overseas. Uh-huh. I remember one time she brought us a couple of policeman suits with a little cap pistol and everything. Oh, boy. <laughs> we have a picture of that. Okay. But she always brought something, and I remember we always had to go to Mobile to meet the train. When she came back, Daddy would have to get in his old car and go to Mobile and yeah. bring that Betty back. The and that was after the bridge, of course. After the causeway was put in, uh huh. Yeah. I forgot when, whenever they stopped the boats, the causeway was ready. So it must have been, when could that have been? The causeway was put in in 27, and the last boats ran in 32. Because it was quite a while later before the tunnel was yeah. put in, but the causeway was open. All the Bankhead. Bankhead tunnel was about. Yeah, but they had a big archway over the road, you know, yeah. and you had to pay a dollar or something like that to use that. Oh, yeah, that's what uh, Weta Berglund mentioned that, I believe, mm -hmm. when we taped her, that you had to pay a toll yeah. to go across the causeway. That was way before the tunnel, was it? Yeah. Um, let me say something right here and now before I forget it, <laughs> and, and that is that this uh, camera is still set on the wrong date. It says 2022. It's actually the year 1995. And uh, we're going to try to find someone who can help us get this straightened out, but it's not straightened out right now. Okay, the rest okay, of the information that, is correct. really not that old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Um, okay, uh, I've heard a lot of people talk about Marietta Johnson and how, what, how, uh, when she walked into a room, she was, you know, she, oh, you yeah. knew it, you knew it. She was a presence. When she started talking, she just commanded attention from everyone. They used to have those Wednesday noon uh, dinners, you know, at the Cummings Hall, and she would usually speak mm -hmm. some then. And it was very, I remember hearing her many times. Always end up singing Fair Hope. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I still love to do that when I go to a meeting. But she was very fair about discipline at the school, I thought. You know, you weren't supposed to go out at night mm -hmm. during the week. You were supposed to be home by 
nine o'clock or something like that. And there was one thing that my brother Paul wanted to do in Mobile. I forgot now what the occasion was, but her her motto was, if you can't say no, say yes, and they could do it. You know. <laughs> so when mother talked to her about it, she said, well, that will be all right. You know. Mm -hmm. If it's some special thing. Yeah. So she was pretty liberal that way, and yet disciplinarian too about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Well, st structure, but not not rigid. Mm -hmm. Structure, yeah. Okay. So, Bud, tell us. Go ahead. I guess while we're I'm talking to you, let's um, talk about when you set up your practice here. You're an optometrist mm -hmm. in Fairhope, and you've been here a long time. 45 years, 45 yeah, years. 46 years in a couple of months. Uh-huh. That is a long time. Yeah. Well, I went to organic, of course, except for my junior year of high school. After Aunt Betty died, my grandfather was living in Washington, and we went up there. And I went to Eastern High School for a year, and then I came back the next year mm -hmm. and graduated at organic. Well, tell us and about the difference. <laughs> Terrific difference, really. Was it pretty structured up there and authoritarian? Mm, yeah, I thought it, uh, I didn't mind it so much. Uh -huh. It's just that it was a big city mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. going yeah. from eight boys or six or eight or so in our class to several thousand in the school. Wow. How about the academics? Did you handle that all right? Yeah, I think I did all right on that. But then later I went to George Washington University and there wasn't any problem getting in. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was going to say that Aunt Maddie, after, after supper at night, you know, they had the fireplace going and everything, she liked to sit at that table right in front of the fireplace there and play solitaire. Mm -hmm. Now she would do that for hours. Oh, uh, you know what she was doing? She was she thinking. Was, yeah, that's right. She was probably thinking or trying to figure out what to do next or something. I've played solitaire a little bit myself and <laughs> think about something else and you can do it, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, well, Reed, tell us when you came and when you met Bud. Uh, my father got laid off from West Electric in 19, October 1932. And uh, we came down here then. Probably someone might say, well, how did you know about Fairhope? Well, my mother used to come down from Chicago with her parents to visit her grandfather. And uh, we made a few trips down from New Jersey before my dad lost his job. So when the Depression came, he figured, well, living in the North where you need to heat your homes more and winter clothing and being out of work, he figured that any monies that he had saved up would stretch a little farther down here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I too went to the organic school for about four and a half or five years. I came down when I was, we, we came down when I was nine years old. And uh, speaking before about Mrs. Marietta Johnson, uh, before I left to go back north, I had an autograph book and I got E.B. Gaston's autograph in my book and Miss Marietta Johnson's autograph Oh, in my book. how about that? So, uh, I sort of cherish those autographs in say. my uh, autograph book. Uh, I really enjoyed the uh, town, town of Farrell, now called the city of Farrell, and uh, playing on the beach and in the gullies and going to school. And uh, what I can remember two particular instances of the school. Oh, my great-grandfather lived where Greer's is now, on Section Street, uh -huh. right across the street from the Masonic Temple. And uh, I had a very long walk to school. I just had to cross a little, <laughs> a little runoff uh, to the head from the dairy. There was a runoff, like a little stream, mm -hmm. and Bancroft wasn't cut through yet. So all I had to do was cross a little bridge to go to school. Uh -huh. And uh, one time my father and mother went fishing down Fish River and asked me if I wanted to go along that day. And I said, no, I would prefer to go to school and to go fishing. Oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, in a few years, my dad, uh, being on single tax property, I want to say he bought the 
property, but he bought the home on Bancroft and Equality, uh, where uh, Mr. Claude Arnold now has a surveying business. And when we lived there, one time uh, I had an opportunity to go to the circus in Mobile, and instead I went to school. And I was telling the teacher, and that was when we were in the Bell Building, I was telling the teacher that I had the opportunity to go to the circus that day, and she said, do you still have the a chance to catch up with those people? And, and I said, yes, they weren't leaving until, say, 9 o'clock. So she said, will you go catch up with them and go to the circus, because that is a learning uh, experience as well as going to school. So those were two experiences that uh, I really personally had that would be so much different than the public schools up north. Mm -hmm. And um, well, Fairhope was just a great town where your your parents never had to worry about you after school. And Buddy and I used to go bicycle riding together and jogging around town. Jogging. This guy was a speeder. I don't know whether he still considers himself that, but we used to run behind all the different buildings and stores and that. And uh, play over at Stimson's sawmill, and and uh, it, it was just it was just great to live here because it's a town that uh, has a lot of friendship. And uh, through the years, through the years, uh, after having moved away, we kept in touch with our Fairhope friends, coming back occasionally on vacations, and and uh, you know, when it was Owen Stimson and Bernie Klump and. The Fredericks and Wesley Stapleton and Hazel Stapleton and I was uh, just just kept in touch with all of these friends and uh, I, I always wanted to retire in Fairhope but uh, well it didn't present itself until recently <laughs> and then when I did I uh, well I don't want to get but I met Flo's sister Anna and married a wonderful Girl. Yes, you buried you buried <laughs> in a wonderful family and became distinguished. I, I sure did, and uh, I'm enjoying retirement here now. And well, I I miss New Jersey friends, but I don't miss the cold weather and the snow and the ice and all that. <laughs> but uh, Fairhope is a great community and have great people. Well, I have to ask you to all the men, all I start to say all the boys, <laughs> all the boys we have interviewed have mentioned the clod fights in the gully. Did you all have clod fights in the gully? I don't recall that. I used to play in the gully. I used to play in the gully. Okay. Oh, so you were the nice guys. Y'all didn't do any fighting. <laughs> well, I don't want to say that we were the nice guys. We might have been the ones they were throwing at. <laughs> Maybe so. Or you would get away from that. What was your grandfather's name? Warren Burnham. And he's buried in the colony cemetery. Now, was that your grandfather or great grandfather? That's my great grandfather. Your great grandfather. Oh. Great grandfather. Okay. B U R B U R N H A M. Okay. Warren Burnham. But my grandparents, uh, his his daughter and son-in-law, see, my grandparents, uh, I went to the colony office one time and looked up where they lived on Magnolia. Uh, they told me, I'm not quite sure. I didn't quite agree with them, but they, they lived right on the corner of Magnolia and Section Street where uh, John Brown's office is, or the, but I thought they were down a, a couple of houses, but my grandparents had a house on Magnolia. Mm -hmm. My great-grandfather so, had a real nice lot. I wish I knew the size of it, but uh, right next door to us was Harris Rockwell and Louise Rockwell. And that great big That's azalea right. bush? <laughs> yeah, that big azalea bush. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What what were your uh, your great grandparents were Burnham and your grandparents were Albert and Carrie Cooper. Okay. Cooper. That was his daughter, my Warren Burnham's daughter. Was yeah. Carrie Cooper. Okay. In fact, my mother's middle name was Burnham. Uh huh. You know, her, her name was Gladys Burnham Cooper. Mm hmm. So I remember one time my dad was telling me. I guess my mother came down and went to school here in the winter time, and I, my dad and mother must have been going together as she got a little older. And my dad told me one time, he says, in Chicago, those were long winters when your mother went down to Fairhouse. <laughs> 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 so, uh, 
I have I still have one or two or three postcards uh, in my postcard collection at Fairhope that date back to I think 1908, 1911, 1912, and that. Mm -hmm. so. You know that's interesting. As many people as we have uh, videotaped for this project, um, I think you're the only one. I didn't know back then, yeah. back in the good old days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, of course I know you now. But uh, uh, everybody else I knew back then, yeah. or knew their name. At least Arthur Keller, I had, didn't know who really know him personally, but I knew his name and yeah. knew the family. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Well, um, does anybody want to comment on the changes that have occurred in Fairhope? Well, the only thing I would say is uh, changes occur everywhere. And as much as the natives and even newcomers to Fairhope would like to see it remain as it was, nothing can. If if you if you think you remain as you were, you're really going backwards because progress is going on somewhere. And uh, no matter where we came from up north, those places change too. And it's always nice to say, boy, I wish Fairhope was like it was in the in the 20s or the 30s or early 40s or something, but, but it can't be because if, if progress goes on all around you, then you're not standing still, you're going backwards. Uh, it's, still, it's still a beautiful town, I mean, with the Christmas lights and the flowers and the flower boxes and the, I've seen people come down here and I, I walk around town and people from other states and they'll say, my goodness, look at all the flowers. They even have flowers on the top of the garbage cans or something. Yeah, you know? right. You know, so, <laughs> oh, sure, I like to reminisce about when we'd play in the gullies or it seemed like the beach down there was as wide as the Gulf Shores are, but yeah. they weren't you know, even then. But now the bay was so clear. The no bay was clear. <laughs> Fly Creek but was... But was it? <laughs> Fly Creek was just Fly Creek. Oh, well, yeah, the bay was clear. Yeah, you can yeah. see all the little ripples on the bottom. Sure. Well, I do remember at that at times. Yeah, yeah that's true. But, I mean, it's such an beautiful I remember town. most about it. I think in the summertime, it's going down the bay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You used to go down in the morning and come back at noon and go down again in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and the art center here is, is great. And, you know, I mean, it's, we've got a, a college here, community college. And, you know, we just, we just can't go... Uh, with the growth, which we don't like, has come some many benefits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're we're yeah. pleased to have those. Uh, yeah. But as one person said to me one day, um, you you become uh, you, you qualify as a real fair hoper when you say they ought when you move here and then say they ought not to let anybody else in. <laughs> 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 so a lot of us feel that way. And when I'm walking on uh, Mag uh, Mobile Street along the sidewalk and those cars go whizzing by one after the other, I say, well, <laughs> we lost it. <laughs> well, one but thing Buddy ought to say mm -hmm. about his father, which was just written in the paper recently, oh, yeah. was that uh, you mentioned walking down on, on uh, Mobile Avenue there, mm -hmm. all that park down there uh, along uh, South Mobile is because of your dad. Between what used to be Burkell's and the Legion, yeah. but tall on the beach on the west side of the street, he brought in to the city a uh, city property. Uh, how did he do that? D did he have a deed to it or how did he get it? Well, well, yeah, what happened, uh, yeah, tell they, me they had to pay the tax, um, whoever owned it, I don't know what it, who owned it, but anyway. Uh, it bought it in as a tax uh, for the, with, in the city's name, so yeah. they had to pay the tax, or he had to pay that. There's somebody, little, somebody. There's a little more to that story because it was it had been when that was first developed. That was part of the of the development, the Magnolia Beach area, mm -hmm. and everybody that lived there thought they owned that land, oh, but yeah. then it got. Nobody, since everybody owned it, nobody owned it, and it got <laughs> yeah. sold for taxes. Yeah. And Corny Gaston was on the city council at the time, and he was the one that got the city convinced to take it in. Hmm. 
from your father. Yeah. Oh, how about that? Oh, can I add was on a, Yeah, was sure, on sure. This is, we're city not. council at one time, too, my dad was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. My dad ran the movies for two years. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about that? Uh, well. This is a movie this, mogul family. It isn't a movie <laughs> house anymore, but it's right where the Muffin Man is in, yeah. the, in the back. And, and oh, yeah. Sure. Uh, right on the corner of uh, Fairhope Avenue and Church Street. My dad ran the movies for about two years. Mm -hmm. Did Mr. Fuller have it then? Mr. Fuller, George mm -hmm. Fuller, yeah. Yeah, I guess Reuben Rockwell ran it for, I don't know, a long time. But you must have been, the, his father must have been there before he was because he he was, oh, and about, well, I don't know. Yes, I think he uh, was because I, I met Reuben Rockwell over at the... Uh, Mary Johnson Museum in the mm -hmm. Bell Building one mm -hmm. time, and, and uh, he was remarking when he ran the theater there. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you know they opened up another one? Another they opened one. up one uh, about where uh, a little bit, a little bit well, west of the, uh, the really dry cleaners, auto supply place. Yeah, yeah across the street from Jewelman's. Yeah. Oh, they okay. had another one at the same time Fuller. We had two theaters. We had two theaters. Mm -hmm. and, uh, my remember. goodness. And you don't I remember that one? I vaguely remember yeah. that there was one there, but I don't think yeah. we ever went to that. Yeah. Because when I when I first started going to the movies, other than to go to see uh, Admiral Byrd at the South Pole, uh, <laughs> when, I don't know, I was about 10 or so. Anyway, uh, then mainly I went to the movies after I started dating first Oliver and then Lucere Rockwell so because mm -hmm. they could get in free and yeah <laughs> <laughs> very good because <laughs> our dad was running the movie <laughs> yeah. yeah and then Oliver ran the movie some after that after his dad quit so. and then my mom ran it <laughs> yes yeah. Yeah, she was right. the last one to run it I guess I think mm -hmm. she it closed while she was up there. Do you remember well, she was when taking tickets, however, or was it the popcorn? She she did and both. Yeah. And then when Robert Summerlin got out of the theater, she took it over. But they were only doing movies part time, like from Thursday through mm -hmm. Sunday or something like that. Then we had I a think. beach theater too, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's know. right. Do you remember that? Yes. Oh yeah. Well, do you know, you remember when the yeah. when the. Uh, um, they quit being silent movies and uh, and had uh, had talkies. sound mm -hmm. had talkies oh, yeah. and before that they would have a pianist to play yeah. <laughs> during the performances. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, one one time, uh, my great grandfather had to go for a cataract operation right here in Fairhope, so my dad went to be with him while he was in the hospital. And to him, day was night, night was day, you know, and my dad wasn't getting any sleep. Now my great grandfather at that time was probably 81 or 82 years old. So my dad said to the nurse, can you give him a little something to make him sleep at night? You know, I'm not getting any sleep. And in fact, my great grandfather would wake up and my dad would be sleeping and say, wake up, Harvey, you came to keep me company. Or <laughs> so the nurse put something in a glass of water and my great-grandfather could sniff it and tell there was something in there to make him sleep, and he says, is it habit for me? And <laughs> 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 he's a man about it. 81 know, years old. 81 or 83 years old. Wasn't all the habit for me. I wonder who the doctor was. Yeah. Was doctor, know. was it right here at Jordan Clinic? Yes. Uh-huh, may, may have been Dr. Jordan. Yeah. Of course, he had Johnson yeah. in there with him. Oh, not for cataracts, no. no. Mm. Of course not. I didn't know what he was. Yeah, it must have been. Of course, in those days, you were, uh, your eyes were covered longer than they are today. I guess mm -hmm. he was in maybe two or three days or so with his eyes covered, which they don't need to do as long today. Yeah, that's right. That's one place where things have changed considerably. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you go, you go in the morning and get up and are home for breakfast. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> What are you on? Come on, you must have more memories of Fairhope tonight. Well, let's let's cut it for a minute, and okay. we'll see. On tape now. <laughs> We're, you guys have told too many things here without me getting it on tape.
right <laughs> next to the movie theater in okay. the same building okay. was a candy store. And I forget whether it was in a machine or not in a machine, but if you bought, say they were a little piece of candy, and if they had a, a pink center or a white center, it was like taffy. You open it up, and you say you bought five for a penny, uh, five for a nickel, penny piece. You open it up, it's got a different set. Now you get a big lollipop like that if you get uh -huh. the biggest bit. Oh of boy, that was the yeah. prize. So, <laughs> I used to be pretty lucky at that. <laughs> you remember that one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, and so you say some of the some of the people who were looking at the movies uh, couldn't understand the British actor and well, asked for your dad, who was the projectionist, to change the sound so that they could understand the accent. Yeah, okay, yeah. well that sounds like me. I'm always turning the volume up so I can understand somebody. <laughs> and you find that people will, will shout, you know, if they don't understand yeah. a foreign language, they'll, they'll talk shout louder. Talk yeah. louder <laughs> make you understand. <laughs> Oh, speaking of foreign languages, I remember going to the Oregon school, and uh, we had a man from Germany uh, taking the adult course. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the ceramics room and in the kill, he made a, a teacup and saucer set. I remember that. A the, oh, the whole in the set, ceramics. The whole set. Oh, wow. Baked in the kiln and, and glazed. Was that the teacher or the or no, a student? No, an, an adult. An adult, okay. Taking the adult course. Uh, course yeah, yeah, course. okay. We, well, we had a little nip while we had the camera off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recall his name, but I do recall the fact that he was uh, an adult taking an adult course from he was from Germany. The school filled many needs in Fairhope. It oh, really, sure it really did. did. And just like Buddy said, those. Those Wednesday noon lunches, boy. <laughs> oh, the noon lunches. What was? Oh, that Community was lunch. At, oh, at yeah, Cummings when she Hall. spoke. Yeah, yeah. Cummings Hall, yeah. right. Yeah. And the basketball games down there at Cummings Hall. I remember one yeah. time they, they had uh, the, the House of David, similar mm -hmm. to the Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These guys all had beers and they played almost professional basketball, but they came to play with the, the organic high school team and it was like, it was just a fun game. Because well, I think were they were playing with the town team, weren't they? They were playing against the town team. You're right, you're right, mm -hmm. yeah, not the high school team. Henry Bishop and yeah, yeah. Right. some yeah. that I, I forgot now they were, but it was a good show. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. great. I think I saw them once or, or a similar Might have been the Harlem Globetrotters. No, I didn't oh, see the Harlem was, Globetrotters. It was I, the House yeah, of David. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's the one I saw in Cummings yeah. Hall. Then they had a minstrel show at the Cummings Hall one time. Hmm. <laughs> my, my dad was uh, the, sort of the promoter of that, to uh, make, make a little money, I think. Mm -hmm. And Cummings Hall, of course, was the hall it with the, the stage and, the players, uh, when, right. and everybody. And the dance floor, it had a, a wonderful dance yeah. floor. Well, and the, of course, the, it was different than, than the casino mm -hmm. down at the, the Bayfront. The casino was great with the dance floor, yeah, but it was, yeah. uh, Cummings Hall was still different in the fact that you would have the auditorium. Right. It was the uh, cultural center. <laughs> yeah, more than the casino would be considered a cultural center. Right. Well, it had a stage and, and yeah. wings that yeah. you could go mm -hmm. by. Yeah. Yeah. Used to have a lot of plays there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazingly good acoustics there for not being scientifically signed. Mm -hmm. We forgot to mention a few other buildings we had. We had the casino. Well, we there's had. an awful lot of things you could mention, but we're not supposed to do the whole history of Fairhope. Well, you are if you if you know it. <laughs> You're supposed to do it if you know it. <laughs> I don't know the whole history of Fairhope. <laughs> Except I don't my, my sister-in-law and my wife, their grandfather was one of the founders of the town. That's all right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when my great grandfather came here, but I know he had to be here somewhere in the twenties because my. And I su assume he came here because of the single tax. Is that what drew him to this area? I don't know. I don't you don't know? know. Okay. Don't know. Okay. He came from Chicago. Mm -hmm. he came down from Chicago. But, uh, well, we're not doing the whole history, but we didn't mention the La Corona. <laughs> no, <and> you mentioned <laughs> you mentioned uh, your father. Uh, had the idea for the property from Burkell's, but you didn't mention what Burkell's was. 
That's right. And I, you know, I'm not sure we have mentioned on tape where Burkell's was. At the foot of Pier Street. Right? At the foot of Pier, Pier yeah. 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 And it was a skating rink. And it yeah, was a skating right. rink. Yeah, Burkell's was skating. We used to have some fun down there, too. Yeah. Yes, and that it burned in 1952, I believe. Or 53, I'm not sure. I think, see, I was thinking it was 53, the winter of 53, but I, I think I read here recently that it was 52, but anyhow, about that time. Okay, guys, we'll turn you off and see if you can think of something else. You can't talk too long off tape without me wanting to cut it back on. Oh, <laughs> and you okay. go ahead and talk about the tourist club now. Didn't have a permanent location, but. Well, they would, they would, uh, one year they would have a rent a building on Section Street and, uh, Next year, the tourist club would get some funds and rent an open building on Fairhope Avenue or Somewhere. Church Street. And uh, they had a deck shuffleboard and they had tables for the tourists. And uh, I worked there once in a while, uh, sweeping up or bringing in wood for the wood stove or something. And it was always fun, although I was a youngster, to uh, to work for some older people that way. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I guess. And how much did you earn doing this? 25 cents. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Okay, uh, and, and Bud, you mentioned uh, Fig and The tourist club down, I mean, oh, the, okay. yeah, the tourist club at the uh, corner of Fairhope and Summit Street. Mm -hmm. And the no a Novak band, you know, oh, Mr. Yeah. Novak. Yeah, I remember his, him. His children all played an instrument, and I played there with them when I was playing a clarinet mm -hmm. one time. I forgot if it was a a luncheon or just whether we were just playing there to be practicing or something, but I remember that way back. And that was always a good place for the tourists because they had shuffleboard and meetings and lectures and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. That was Malvis Bakery before that. Was it Malvis mm -hmm. Bakery before that? Well, for I, didn't know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> Well, uh, you mentioned something about working out in the fields, doing what now? Oh, picking potatoes. Picking yeah. potatoes. For a dollar and a quarter an hour. Dollar, I mean a day. A dollar and a quarter a day. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah. And beans. Mm -hmm. What kind of beans did you? Did Just you regular. Green beans? Uh, yeah, regular green beans for uh, 33 cents. Uh, something, I don't know how much. Bushel. <laughs> yeah, it might have been something like that. But Okay. It took almost all day to do that. <laughs> that was <laughs> a long time before they had the pickers, yeah. the mechanical pickers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was the minimum wage of the day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I used to sweep out uh, Comics Hall after the games. I think I told you that. I swept out Cummings Hall before the game to get in. He swept <laughs> out after the game. <laughs> you, you take the wet shavings, you know, mm -hmm. throw it on the floor, mm -hmm. and you use one of those push brooms. Uh -huh. Just go right down and really right on down. And where do you get all those wet shavings and things that they used to I use? I don't know where we got those. Oh, there was oh, I think it was yeah, some yeah. kind of oil that was in oil. all this little fine um, shavings. They don't use them anymore for some reason. And we got a yeah. pass to the game, you know, when they do that. Sort of yeah. Thing. The purpose of the sawdust or whatever it was that had the oil in it was to keep the dust down. Yeah, and mm -hmm. clean it up. But it worked. It did keep the dust down. And back when I had hay fever, that made a big difference. <laughs> Any other ways you entrepreneurs uh, made money? <laughs> no, not in those days. I didn't make much money. You were, you were <laughs> what, about teenagers then? Well, when my father and mother and I returned to New Jersey, I was 13, so I... Reed, why don't you tell us what you did when you were about 17 and your economics teacher, you were living in New Jersey, right? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I, in, my, in my senior year in high school, there were two subjects particularly that uh, I was interested in. and One was single tax, having lived here in the 30s, and one was the stock, stock market. Well, my economics teacher, we get to the subject of stocks and bonds, and he said, we will skip over that subject because less than 10% of this class will ever own stock. <laughs> and my dad was a little upset by that because he was interested in the stock market, and we only lived about 20 miles from New York City, 
or he could have taken us for a, a field trip. And the other thing was, uh, we got to the subject of single tax, and he said, it'll never work. So I went <laughs> home that evening, and I got uh, Henry George's book of Progress and Poverty, and my dad had retained a copy of the uh, uh, bylaws of the single tax corporation, and I took that to school the next day, and I said, well, this, I graduated high school in 1942, not 1842, 1942. <laughs> and I said, hey, now you're the teacher, and I'm not contradicting you, but uh, here's a town where it's been working since 1894, but of course you said it won't work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't flunk you right on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Lucille did that but same thing at the university when they were studying different uh, systems and, mm -hmm. and the teacher said, "Well, we'll, we'll just skip over single tax." Oh. And and the seriously stood up and said, "You just leaving out the best thing there has is in the whole book." <laughs> the teacher said, "Why?" And, and the sir told him, he "said Well, you you just give us a class on it then." <laughs> and he was the sir was glad to do that. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Well, well, you left out one thing though. You did get a lesson in the stock market. What, what, how old were you when you first put, bought, bought a piece of stock? <laughs> My senior year in high school, probably 17 or 18. Okay, so your dad gave you his, your own education. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Very and good. I still have that, I still have the stock that I bought. Well, that's, <laughs> that's an heirloom now. You can't sell it. <laughs> Back in 1941, so it's still in there. Great. <laughs> okay, well, if we think of anything else, we need to talk about here? That's about it, as far as I can figure. Well, I thank both of you very much for letting us tape you. Okay, we're, here we, <laughs> I keep saying, every time I introduce somebody, well, I say, here we are. You don't, you don't are. have anything, of course, like no, that? No, I don't have one of those things. <laughs> I have one down at the house. Oh, well,